How's it going guys, Chaos Prime here and we have massive news for you today. Ranging from the teaser event today to updates to the alliance system, guilds, endgame and raids, I want to talk about the overall demo and what it's done for Bioware. Having hit 3k subs to show my appreciation, I wanted to do a giveaway, so I'll be giving away a copy of the game to one lucky winner. Follow the link in the description below for all the details. If you find this video informative, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Can we hit 4k? 5k before the game launch? Maybe even... It's over 9000! What 9000?! I mean, who knows, right? Who knows? So, let's get right into the big one. Raids. Like many of you, I am also looking forward to what pinnacle event will come from Bioware in terms of raids. It's the ultimate challenge and one that requires the most teamwork from any event to complete. At least that's the thought process behind it anyway. So in a recent interview, Eurogamer asked Ben Irving about raids for us and here is the response Ben gave. The problem with raid is it has a connotation, that it requires more people or has five bosses in a circle. That's why I'm using the word aspiration content. In other games, a raid is that, and while I think that is important to a game like ours, we have an idea which ticks the needs of why a raid is important. It's a similar thing. It's the thing you'll schedule with your buddies, will be hard, requires tons and tons of coordination, and then there'll be ways to show off if you're good at that or not. These as yet unnamed activities, which will still be designed for the usual four players, form just part of what you're doing in Anthem after you finish the main narrative path. You'll have strongholds, just free at launch with more coming, to grind through, contracts, which are bounty type missions featuring encounters in Anthem's open world, and free play, which lets you roam and see what's going on in Anthem that particular week or day. So it's now confirmed that the party size for raids, or aspirational content as they put it, will remain at 4 players, and I'm okay with this. The Division 2 takes a 4 player experience and makes it an 8 player experience for the raid. Destiny takes a 3 player experience and makes it a 6 player experience for the raid. It's a nice change to see something set in stone and balanced for this across the board. What's your thought on this? Let me know in the comments section below. Excited for these so called aspirational raid type of encounters? I know I am and I can't wait to get stuck in and tackling them. Next we move on to the world of Anthem and its evolving nature and how things will change over time. How what you do even in the repeatable quests will be varied and most importantly, how they will continue to deliver a story narrative for years to come. Ben says, you're not always going to be seeing the same exact stuff. Things can change. You don't always understand why, but things happen in the world. We have plans and ideas to pay off on that. Events will point you to daily or weekly challenges of varying difficulties tied into ongoing story of how the mysterious anthem of creation is affecting the world day. Meanwhile, back in Fort Tarsus, the game's cast of NPCs will be refreshed with new things to talk about. They have a bunch of things to say, and then they'll run out of stuff to say, and then we'll add some more things. The cadence of that we have to work out. We believe telling an ongoing narrative is important, so in our story planning, we've mapped out several years of the story arc, where things go, not all the specifics, but the big beats of how it will happen. We can tell a narrative in or out of the game, with super expensive cinematics or with little quips and sentences and lore in the world. We just need to find that balance of when do we need a new role playing conversation so someone can teach you something? When do we add a new mission with a cinematic? We'll be adding all the stuff after launch, we just need to get the right mixture of it all. So we can see from this a lot of work and thought process has gone in. Effort to make this a really immersive experience is given at every stone turn and there will be something new for you whether you're in the fort or in the world. Bioware hopes to have all fronts covered, I just hope they don't do too much and trip along the way. I love the fact that the story is at the centre of everything they do, the narrative is really important for me. I want context and reason, this is what makes me excited and I hope it continues. Next we get more information on alliances and guilds. Ben had the following to say. The alliance system, what is that and how does it work? The alliance system is a way for you and your friends to be rewarded for playing the game. Anytime you complete the expedition, mission, contract, free play, stronghold, you earn experience, that experience also goes into the alliance system. Even better, the experience from the other people in your group also goes into the alliance system. Even better still, players on your friends list who play without you, their experience also goes into the alliance system. At the end of every week, 
you are awarded coin based on how much experience was contributed to the alliance system. There are several tiers you can work through each week as well as a weekly cap. So this is just confirming what we knew before, with the alliance system essentially being the main source of coin gain with weekly caps and tiers. Pretty cool stuff. Now the question remains, what is the cap and what do the tiers actually entail? What do you have to do to move up the tiers? Is it something that happens automatically? Is it something that will reward you with more coin based on your tier? Or will this just be a ranking system with no real difference whatsoever other than being able to show your friends how much time you've spent in the game? Only time will tell. Guilds. Guilds are cool, right? Bringing communities together. Sadly, there will be no guilds at launch as they try and push the alliance system. It's a bit disappointing, I have to agree, but it seems based on what they are saying, they have no real direction of where they actually want to go with the guilds. The official response is this. The short answer is, guilds will not be available at launch. While we believe the alliance system is a great way to encourage social interaction with Anthem, we also understand guilds play a critical role in helping players form organised groups with people of similar interests and play styles. Our goal is to release guilds as soon after launch as we can. Details on timing will come as soon as we have our plan locked in. We want this to be awesome. So like I said, until they know what they're actually doing and have a plan on how to execute, they will be holding on to it. So with that said, I do get a lot of questions in regards to am I starting a guild or a clan. I do currently have a Discord available with the details in the description below. We do have groups split into PC, Xbox and PS4. So if you are looking for players to play with or looking to broaden your horizon of people to play with, you're more than welcome to join the Discord. The invite is open, so hopefully I'll see you there soon. And when guilds and clans appear, we can take it from there. Next I wanted to briefly touch on what Chad said in his blog, he is the live game service director so he mentioned that on Sunday something was going to happen which is essentially today and he specified this afternoon with no time zone which was a bit silly but there you go. We currently have no idea what it is, the weather is changing and Michael Gamble has already released a couple tweets commenting that we're going to be seeing changes, it's getting really stormy, lightning bolts have started to strike from the sky, it's pointing towards what looks like a shaper storm. There's also talk about cataclysms. Shaper storms could now be the new cataclysms. We simply don't know. We really don't know much about it. In fact, it could be a live surprise stream that they're gonna undergo for us to go and watch. It could be a cutscene that triggers. It could be a, it could be a video that they release on YouTube. At this point in time, all we know is that something today in the afternoon is going to take place and currently we're no wiser to it. With that said, I hope it's cool and interesting and will give us something further to look forward to and I'm really hoping it does give us more of an insight into these shaper storms or cataclysms if they are being renamed because currently now the word cataclysm is being bounced around. These are supposed to be some kind of vortex portal but then again if you watch the E3 trailer from 2017, the Shaper Storm was also some kind of vortex portal. So I'm seeing similarities here in what they're describing. So maybe it is just a case that the Shaper Storm has been renamed to Cataclysm, but we'll soon find out. Right, so finally I wanted to talk about the demo, the demo that came out last week and this week. So up until now, my thoughts on this game has been extremely positive, as many of you will have seen. I have been critical here and there in some places, but overall my enjoyment factor is pretty high. I am really enjoying it and I want more. However, I do want to point out that this demo has hurt the game. And I think releasing the demos in this condition was a pretty bad idea. On Friday I streamed the game and a bunch of people jumped into the stream, so thank you for that. And they were having mixed reviews, you know, some people were basically saying how they were really happy with the demo, they were enjoying it. Others were having a horrid time, sound cutting out, being kicked out of strongholds, ability, UI just bugging out, suffering severe performance issues, a lot was going on. And though the 95% bug, which was probably the most critical one that they needed to fix, was fixed, I have to say that this demo, the last two demos in fact, has hurt the reputation of Anthem more than Bioware imagined. And it's a real shame. They really should have called these stress testing or something like that to test how the game runs in the open network. That way, people wouldn't care how old the build was or what condition. If you release the word demo, that's as close to the finished product as you're gonna get. People don't care that it's six weeks old or eight weeks old or 10 weeks old. 
People don't care about that. If I go into the PlayStation Store, if I go into the Xbox Live Store and I see a demo and I play the demo and it's great, I expect the final product to be of that quality. People don't pay attention to this is still being built and in process and blah blah blah. People don't pay attention to that because they see the word demo. Now, if you had the word beta or stress test or anything going according to that to indicate to the user that this was not the final release or nowhere near the final release, that would have been fine. Not a lot of people go to social media. Not a lot of people go to Reddit. Not a lot of people go around Facebook and things like this looking for this information. If they find it here on YouTube, great. If they don't, then they're none the wiser. So those people that are coming in saying, oh, look, Anthem's got an open demo. Let's try it out, guys. Get their mates all into it. Go in four players. Boom, crash. All right, let's just go back into it. Maybe something happened. Kicked out of a stronghold on the final boss. Let's go back into it. Now the sound's cut out and we can't even hear each other. Stuff like this ruins first impressions. And in a game like this, which is a brand new IP, first impressions matter. And I think personally, despite me being able to look past all this, because I know that this is a beta at best, it's pretty much stress testing. As someone who's worked in the industry, I can tell you that an eight to 10 week old build is light years of old data. But that's because I've got personal experience. You don't. And if you don't, you're playing the demo and basically saying, well, this is pretty piss poor. You know, the demo is buggy as hell. The gameplay is fine. The flying is great. The Colossus itself has been already confirmed that it's pretty much underperforming heavily. You need to pretty much spec it out before it becomes half decent. I mean, I'm personally happy after I've spec'd it, but as a vanilla Colossus, it's pretty poor. You jump into the Colossus and you are expecting to be a tank. You take three hits and you're down. I mean, that's not right. They're saying that they're fixing all this for the live release, but the live release is too late. This is the build that you've put out for everyone to see. And the build that everyone sees is what everyone will judge you by. If I was gonna do a re review right now, it wouldn't be great. But if I was to do a review with all those issues that they're saying fixed for the live release, my review would be completely different. But Bioware came out, EA came out, shoulders up, chest out. We are giving you the chance to play before you buy. And that is great. That shows pure confidence in their product. Yes, there were problems. There were always going to be problems. Going from a controlled environment to an open environment. There's always going to be problems. But don't call it a demo. Call it something appropriate so people know what to expect. By calling it a demo, I just personally feel that they hurt it. And that's really, really bad. So I hope Bioware takes some valuable lessons from this for the future and future endeavors or future updates. Maybe when they come to releasing future content, they're going to want to stress test it. I hope they name it appropriately so people understand what it is that they're testing and what it is that they're playing. I don't know. You let me know in the comment section below what you think. I didn't want to end it on a sour note because I'm really hyped and pumped for Anthem. But from what I'm seeing around me, more and more people are feeling disappointed and they're feeling disappointed simply because the demo was in such a bad state that calling it a demo was probably the most colossal failure that they could have done. I hope they learn lessons from this and recover from this. I personally will not be cancelling my pre-order because I've played enough to know that I'm really interested in this. The social interactions between the characters are fun, engaging, humorous and interesting. The three story missions that we played were good enough. We got to fight up to three titans in one of them. Good stuff. I really enjoyed it. So all in all, I'm personally happy with it because I set my expectations to what it is with my insider knowledge. And the people that I played with also understood what I told them when we were going into this. But the rest of the world wouldn't have known that. And if you don't, you go into this thinking that this is as close to the finished product as you're going to get. This is what Bioware wants you to see. And if this is what Bioware wants you to see, naturally people are going to have reservations. So take it as you will. I'm not telling you to take my word for it. I'm not telling you to go out and buy it because that's a choice for you. But what I can say is things will get better for the final release. And I, for one, am happy with what I purchased because I believe Anthem can only get better from here. Right. Thank you for watching, everyone. Leave your thoughts and comments below. If you found this useful, leave a like, subscribe. Don't forget to share. And I'll hopefully see all of you in the next Anthem video. Remain legend. Thank you.